All right, so it's time to move on to where the superstructure is going to be, the largest part of the deck for the model kit. And you can see the different additions that go on. But like I did with all the others, what I'm going to do is I like to put the um, chrome reflective paint on the bottom for the light switch. And I think I'm going to try something different for the top. Um, instead of trying to brush the walls and stuff by hand, I'm going to try to see if I can mask it off. It might be a little bit neater looking. So I'll see what happens. We'll try that. Um, so when the chrome is all done, I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm going to do this section too, because this is going to go on top. So when it's all chrome painted, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I put a nice coat of the reflective paint. You can see it's all set now. And when it's dry, that'll be all set. We can move on to the top. Moving on to the superstructure. I decided to do something different. Now, when I was doing, let me show you real quick. When I was doing the other decks, what I decided to do was I would paint it with the air gun then I would go back in and I would do the detail. Well, it's so small, it's really hard to, to try to get the detail without making it look, well, terrible. So what I decided to do with the top deck, and this is gonna be the most visual. So what I did in addition, like I did always with the other pieces, I did a nice reflective coat of the chrome paint on the bottom and what I did on the top was I spray painted it white so you can see all the detail this part is still a little tacky so um, I'm gonna let it dry fully and I was afraid by doing that that the um, the deck planks wouldn't be visible but you can see they're still visible so I'm happy I didn't put a big, um, a heavy coat, and I only painted it basically where the, the walls are going to be. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to mask it off. Because I'm tired of the brush marks and my big clumsy hands trying to get in there. So I think because it's long, um, I should be able to mask it off a little bit easier than doing the small sections in the back on the poop deck or the, the decks at the aft uh, deck well. So this one is a little more dry and I did the same thing the underneath. It's a little tacky so I'm gonna let them dry really well and I think I'm gonna start with this piece. I'm gonna mask it off the walls and the structures on the deck and I'm gonna airbrush the deck on and when that's dry I'll remove the masking and hopefully it looks good and I'll show you what that looks like when it's all masked off and it's ready to be painted with the uh, the deck color all right for a bit of an update what I've been doing up until this point is I've been using the spray gun and I've been painting the decks on. And then I've been trying to brush paint the railings. And it's been a pretty uh, difficult time doing that. For something different, what I tried to do this time was I painted the bottom. And then I painted the top. I gave it a coat of white uh, spray paint. And then I went in and I did the, um, the deck by hand, by brush. And... It seems a little easier that way. I was just concerned because it, the uh, brush leaves marks. And, you know, the airbrush does such a better job putting it on. So when this is dry, I'll see what it looks like. I'm going to see if I'm going to continue doing it that way. But in the meantime, I'm going to figure out how I can do the, um, the grand staircase in the Marconi room. I want to make it look... Uh, good but there's just so much we can do with this because it's so small um, we'll see I'll show you the update in a little while all right what I did was I put a wash on it 
And I tried painting in the lines, but <laughs> it was really tiny, and I don't want to really look terrible. So I decided to just put a wash on it, and that'll be good. As long as the panels are kind of sticking out, and you can see where the lines are going to go. So we're ready to move on, and I think um, we're going to move on to the smokestack. Because on this part, I believe there's two. Um, so let's move on to those. All right. So to give you guys a bit of an update on a f another fail of mine, um, I like the color, the oil paint, and I tried to use it on the smokestacks. Well, it doesn't work because, as you can see, it just it just never dries. So I got to take it off, and I got to use the the tester's yellow. So I gave a first coat, and I'll do another one because this section has two. Of the funnels so what I'll do is I'll clean it up and I'll give them both two coats of the testers yellow and I'll show you what it looks like when it's updated all right let me give you a little bit of an update on what I've been doing I put the vents on and you can see the bar and what I did was to try to make it look a little bit authentic now it came when it comes to the collapsible lifeboats let me show you the model the model kit has this that came with it, and I know it's really small. It's got silver on it because I painted the bottom of the decks, but anyway, it goes into the holes on the side of the smokestack. Well, I figured I had some extra popsicle sticks, and I figured, well, you know, if I could actually make the boats, the lifeboats, where they're actually wood, maybe it would look a little bit better. So the only thing I had to remember was I couldn't use the model glue or the crazy glue. I ended up having to use the, uh, the wood glue. But anyway, when that's dry, um, what I'll do is I'll paint the sides of the boat. Um, maybe I won't even do that. Maybe I'll just put the canvas on and keep it looking like wood. But I'm gonna be ready to move on to the smokestacks and I'm gonna be working on the rigging before I glue the halves together. Let me show you what I mean. So I use the, the testers on the smokestacks, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the rigging through and get everything ready to put into the place, and when I'm ready to tie them off, I'll glue the halves together, then I'll do the black part. But I'll show you guys what I mean um, in a minute. All right, so let me show you how I've been doing the rigging. I drilled small holes into the smokestack just below the line where the black ends and the yellow begins. And what I'm going to do is I ran through, I looped it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it underneath and I'm going to tie it off and then secure it into place. Um, but to get it in there, I had to do it while it was still separated because you know once the halves are together there's no way I'm going to be able to run the thread through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the uh, the lifeboats, the collapsible lifeboats because they're glued in place now and when I put the stacks up I'll show you what they look like. Okay so I painted the lifeboats that I had done, the sides of white and I did the top and the burnt umber and I just got done gluing together let me show you the smokestacks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them to the, to the deck and then I'm going to secure the, uh, the rigging before I paint the tops, the black sections. And when I get them on, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I glued the smokestacks in place. And what I got to do now is I got to put the ladders on and then I got to paint the top um, parts black. Then I'll put the inserts. So after that, I'll be ready to think about the lighting. And I'll show you what it looks like when the smokestacks are finished. All right, so I got the tops of the smokestacks painted. What I'll do is when it's dry, I'll put in the inserts. And then I'll put the ladders on. And then I'll touch up the colors on the bottom of the smokestack. And when that's all dry, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, let me, let me tell you what I've been trying um, I want to light the light stacks, but there's not a lot of room in that area. So what I got is I temporarily hooked up to the power supply one of the small LEDs. And I didn't drill a hole, I'm just using the holes that are through the deck 
for now. And I think it'll do a pretty good job. Um, let me hang on a minute. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's there's a small piece of the bulb. Actually, let me put it off. There's a small piece of the bulb that will come up through the deck. So I'll push it in through the bottom and I'll glue it into place. And that should be enough to illuminate the smokestacks. Now I know that the Titanic had lights on either side on the um, port and starboard sides going down. I don't have a lot of room to do that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put the light in front. Um, I'll put it in front of this smokestack. Uh, this is going to be tough because there's not a lot of room to do it. That side, I could put it towards the front on the side. Just enough so it illuminates the smokestacks. But when that's all dry, I'll put the lights in. And I'm going to start on the, uh, the main section. So when this is ready to move on, I'll show you what it looks like. And... Um, We'll see how the lights look. All right, so the smokestacks had a chance to dry, the top part, and I put in the little grills that go on the top. So now it's ready to uh, move on to the lights. All right, so hopefully I'm finished with the decking. And I think it was a better idea. What I did was um, when I painted the whole thing white, and I went in, I cut in the deck, and I painted the deck. It's a little bit easier doing it that way than spraying the deck on and then cutting in the walls. Anyway, when this is dry, I'll be able to go in and do the staircases and all the benches. And I'll show you what that looks like when a detailing is starting to come together. Alright, so the last detail in the smokestacks were the ladders. So when those are dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole in the front of each one. And I'm going to run the lights up through the bottom. And I'll show you what that looks like. So to give you an update with this section, the only thing left to do is to glue the lights into place that are going to illuminate the smokestacks and you can see the holes that I drilled and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the bulbs into place you can see the part that comes up and that's what's going to go through the hole so I'm going to use the glue gun and when they're glued into place I'll show you what it looks like so the glue had a chance to harden and what I did was I hooked it up to the power supply temporarily when you put it on, you can see the uh, the smokestacks were going to be illuminated. And I'll do it in the same position going down the ship on the other smokestacks. But this section is complete. So this is all set to put on to the other deck. So we're ready to move on to the detailing on the final deck. So moving on to the final deck, you can see I glued into place all of the vents And I started the compass tower, or the compass platform. And that's not really uh, <laughs> detailed, but it'll do. I'm going to paint the steps before I put... Th the easiest way to do the, um, the compass tower is to just put both little pegs into the holes on the deck. Because if you try to hold it together, there's no parts that fit. So it's got to be held together that way. But I did the lifeboats as well and they're not entirely accurate in historical um, or historic excuse me but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start painting the uh, the vents white and putting in some of the detail and I'll show you what it looks like when we're ready to move on I painted the tops of the canvases on the lifeboats and I put the deck paint to try to hide the bottom um, to make it hide it a little bit to make it look a little more accurate um, I did the vents touch it up white the compass tower um, I still have to do the little railing along the top on the compass tower but while this all dries we're ready to move on to the smokestacks all right so I used the testers yellow and I gave the funnels a coat and I'm going to let them dry. I drilled the holes into them like I did for the other funnels to pass the rigging through. And when they're dry, I'll be able to start the rigging. All right, so everything had a chance to dry. 
and the smokestacks are dry. So what I'm gonna do now is like I did with the other ones, I'm gonna run the rigging through and then we'll be ready to uh, glue them together. So I got the rigging all set on both sides. And you can see I glued the smokestacks together and I glue them into place on the boat deck. So when it's dry, I'm gonna coat, uh, paint the black section and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I painted the tops of the smokestacks and I put the insert grills in and I drilled out the holes for the lights because um, there's only going to be one illuminating each funnel. I know there's supposed to be two, but there's just not enough room. So it's going to be one illuminating the front of the funnels. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hot glue the bulbs into place. And I'll show you what that looks like when they light up. All right, so I hot glued the lights into place. I got the bulbs underneath. And I temporarily hooked it up to the power supply to show you guys. So what I'm going to do now is put the finishing details on the smokestacks. I'm going to put the ladders on, and then I'm going to put the rear section on. All right, so this part is a little bit of a bugger to try to get on. Um, there are no guides, like there are no little grooves to groove it into place. It just kind of lays on the top, and you have to position it for the bridge. So what I did was I got the that part on, and it's, the uh, glue is drying. And what I'm going to do is put in the last two lights when it's dry, and I'll show you what that looks like. So what I did was I took the lines, the rigging from the smokestacks, and I brought it underneath. And what I did was I hot glued them into place and then I cut them. And I wired all the lights. Because I know there's supposed to be two lights on each smokestack. And because there's not a lot of room, it's a 1550 scale model, so I didn't have room to do it, as you can see. So I put them in the front, little areas over there. But what I did was I put a couple in the back where there was room, just to kind of illuminate the other side. So I hooked it up temporarily. I put it on for you. You can see the rigging. The rigging really brings it out. Instead of just looking like hair, hanging out all over the place. You can see that um, the rigging makes it look like a model instead of a toy. But the extra light, the extra two lights, um, I don't know if it makes it too bright, but it's too late now. <laughs> so I gotta leave it the way it is. So, with this is um, complete, I uh, all the lights are hot glued into place on the bottom and they're wired. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get ready and I'm going to solder these leads into the hull and I'm going to make sure it works before I put this on. So I'll show you what that looks like. Alright so what I did was I loosely fit the decks on top of the hull and I, I really don't want to bad mount this model but it really doesn't fit together that well. Um, maybe because it's old, maybe because it got warped, but I soldered the leads inside. I wish I would have made the power supply leads a little bit longer because um, it was really heck trying to uh, solder in here. There's not a lot of room, but I'll, I hooked it up to the power pack temporarily. Moment of truth. I'm going to put the lights out so you can see it a little bit better. Because Before you glue, you definitely want to make sure that everything's working. You can see she's starting to look more and more like the Titanic. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have put the uh, those two lights in the back of those smokestacks. Um, what do you guys think? 
I think it's too much because the front, just the front looks nice when it's lit. I don't know if that uh, looks too bright, but you can see everything else is just about lit. The hull is lit. And because I've got a long white strip in there, and then I branched it off, and I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I got five, um, no, I should have more than that. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I got six lights. So I got the long white strip, and I have six lights running off the power pack. <laughs> so it's not as bright as it was. Um, maybe I should have thought about plugging it in. I didn't realize it was going to draw so much juice. But let me try to finagle in the deck, and then I can glue everything into place, and then I'll be ready to put the uh, Marconi lines up. All right, so because it's such an old kit, um, it's more than 20 years old. It came out in 1999, so as of this filming, probably 22 years old, close to that. So what I had to do was, because this, the ends were flaring out, and as a result, nothing was lining up. So what I had to do was I had to clamp it. You can see I've got some heavy-duty clamps, but they're keeping her in place. And then I was able to glue the parts of the hull down into where the decks meet. So hopefully that'll hold when I loosen the clamps and give it a good gluing. And I glued on the, uh, the front and see where the bridge is and the wheelhouse up top. So before I unclamp it, I'm going to give it another uh, coating of glue, just to make sure because the, um, the ends are really wide, and you can hold it, push it together, and I don't want it to come apart. So when it's all dry, I can take off the clamps. But in the meantime, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the Marconi line, because the clamps won't be in the way. So. We'll do that, and um, then I'll run them down to the Marconi room, and it should be pretty much all set. Wow. All right, so I got the Marconi lines up, and this is probably the hardest part of the model for me. Trying to get them and then untangling them. You know, I'm not even going to try to do to run them down to the Marconi room, um, because there's really nothing there to anchor them to. I don't know, it depends how I feel later, maybe I will, but right now I'm not going to do it because it's, it's too delicate, it's too small, and like I said, there's no anchor down there. So, I took the clamps off, and some of the glue seeped out and attached to the clamp. So what I'm going to have to do is touch it up with some paint, and then I'm going to hot glue her into place onto the base, and I'll show you what that looks like when she's done. All right, to give you a little bit of an update, I did do one of the lines coming down to the Marconi room because um, I was going cross-eyed trying to do it. I figured I should do at least one. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Just to show that it is there. And the Marconi is a very important part of the uh, Titanic history. So, actually, one of the Marconi gentlemen, Mr. Bride, was the last one, one of the last people off the ship, and he was actually rescued. And he took over duties and helped out on the Carpathia. So the Marconi is important to get into place. So let's just pretend that there are four cables going down to the Marconi room. And see, I mounted her to the base. She's a little off center, but that's okay. She's, she's hot glued. She's not going anywhere. Let me give you a little tour. You can see the British flag on the aft deck propellers, the rear docking platform, you got the cranes in the back, you got the rat lines going up to the white star flag. Don't judge too harshly, <laughs> I had to make all these flags because unfortunately I didn't get decals with this kit. Go over to the the, fair, the, uh, the rear smokestack, of course this one was not uh, used, it was just for show. You can see the rigging. 
number three stack, number two stack, you can see the Marconi line going up to the top, and the number one funnel going down to the bridge, the wheelhouse. You can see the cranes in the front, the anchor crane, the forward cargo hatch, the forward uh, deck well with the cargo hatches and the rat lines going up to the American flag. You can see the Marconi lines, there are four going across. So let me go ahead and turn her on for you. The way I have it uh, set up now is I've got the power pack out back, outside. When I put her on, it's easy to, of course, to try and do this with one hand. There. Yeah. It's easy to just kind of tuck the power supply back into the base. You can see the ship. Again, I don't know if it's because of the age of the ship, but it didn't really go together that well. Let me turn her around for you. The decks didn't really want to line up in the hull. And because they were so open, as soon as I took the clamps off, that the ends of the hull just kind of separated again. So, And I used super glue, or crazy glue. You can see I had to put the name of the ship on. And the holes are all drilled. All the port holes are lit. See the davits for the lifeboats, the cranes, and the flag at the back, the British flag. Going up the mast, you got the white star line, the Marconi lines, going down to the Marconi room, just aft of the grand staircase, the forward grand staircase. And you got the wheelhouse, you got the lifeboats, the collapse the collapsible lifeboats that are on either side of the forward or the number one smokestack. And you got the, the lights that I had put in. So considering how small this model was, I'm pleased how it came out. Well, for me anyway. <laughs> uh, my modeling skills are not that great. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of get a feel before I did the Trumpeter 1-200 kit. And for this kit, I used all testers paints. Oh, looks like one of them uh, fell down. The gray, the tan, the black, the white, the gold, the yellow, and the silver. So, I mean, I don't think it looks that horrible. When I was younger, I had done the uh, Revell model kit. Well, actually, this exact model kit, the same molds, and it uh, <laughs> it didn't come out anything like this, so I'm glad. At least this is much better, because I have a lot of little Titanic-related articles and artifacts that I want to share with you guys, and I didn't have a model. Um, those of you that watch my channel <laughs> know I do have a lot of Titanic model kits. But um, they're not made. More of a collector thing to show you guys different model kits of the Titanic. So now when I do my videos, I have a little a little model to reference to in the videos. You go ahead. I'm gonna put the lights off so you can see. Do a little flyover. Turn her back around put it to the other side for you. Yeah, the base is way off. It's not it's not near the center at all, but I 
I'm gonna have to live with it. I'm not gonna break it off. But she's done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little build that I had. And you guys, if you're an a Titanic enthusiast like I am, then I've got a bunch of goodies that are coming up, and I can reference this model in the video just so you guys can get an idea of the parts of the ship that I'm talking about. I think she looks nice all lit up. I'm glad I put the lights in. Um, I had thought originally that I had done too many lights on top because I figured if you can look in there there's not a lot of room especially for the one and the two smokestacks maybe there's a little room aft but the, the bulbs that I used were a pretty good size and there was no room to do the forward and the aft um, lighting of the funnels where in actuality the um, it's port and starboard where the lights are located to light the funnels but I had absolutely no options of doing that at all because there's just no room so I put them in the front and I wanted to put them in the back but there was just you know there was just no room so for the one and the number two smokestacks there's only one light in the front when I went to the three and the four smokestack I was able to put one in the front of each one and I figured you know there was a little bit more room so maybe if I do the two in the back as well um, I was hoping that it wouldn't look kinda off but I think um, I think I'm glad I put in the lights as far as I'm concerned you can never have too many lights so the hull is lit, the smokestacks are lit. I wanted to light the tops of the masts, but it's just so small. The model kit is tiny, and the the masts are only one piece, one really flimsy piece. I'm surprised they didn't bend when I put the Marconi lines on. Um, you can see maybe a little bit, but not much. But She's my my uh, my favorite ocean liner. She's my sweetheart. I think she's gorgeous. I can do a little flyover for you. Like I said, the um, it didn't really go together as well as I thought it would, but you get a general idea that this is the RMS Titanic. That's where Jack and Rose would have been. So we can do a little flyover. There's a lot of light leaks in the uh, in the ship, but the decks just didn't want to go together. Flying over. So I hope you guys had as much fun watching it is I had building it and it's going to be fun to get started with the first um, Titanic related video with the artifacts coming up I do have a uh, another piece of coal that commemorated the 100th anniversary of the sinking that I'm going to be putting up and I have a, a special brochure for the third class that I'm really excited to show you guys. I mean it's it's a replica so I wish it was the real thing but it's not but it is an exact replica and I've got some other Titanic related odds and ends and collectibles and things to show you so you guys can look forward to that and with this being all set now I can go back to finishing up the aztec on the um, what is it going to be? The starboard side nacelle for the USS Enterprise 1350 scale refit. Because uh, I wasn't able to do that because all my resources in the bench had this model going on. But this is all set. And like I said, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed making the videos and this ship. And I'll see you guys again really, really soon.